I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on GBM, we're diving deep into the science that could save your life. We're talking with award-winning author Mark P. Freelander Jr. He is breaking down the mysteries of your immune system in his groundbreaking book. It is called Everybody's Antibodies, Understanding Your Immune System in the World of COVID. In a post-pandemic world where health anxiety is at an all-time high, this book reveals exactly how your body fights disease, how vaccines actually work, and why understanding your immune system is the key to taking control of your health and mental well-being. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him on TV today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Mark, thanks so much for joining us here today. Well, I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to have an opportunity to try to introduce people to this amazing system that we have in our body. It's, it is the most complex, and obviously not maybe the most important, but it's high up on the level and list. Uh, although, very interesting, your immune system regenerates itself at night when you sleep. Mm. Because when the body allocates the uh, goodies for all of the body systems, uh, the immune system's on the bottom of the list. Mm. But when you're sleeping and everybody else is asleep in your body, that's when the immune system is regenerated. So when somebody says to you, you got to get a good night's sleep, they mean it. Yeah, they mean. absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly so that. sometimes when you feel run down, you feel tired, you feel like you're coming down with something and you want to go to sleep, it's probably a good idea to go to sleep, right? Absolutely. Your body is telling you, go to sleep and let me get you squared away. If you can go to bed feeling bad and wake up feeling good. Um, exactly. Part of our immune system, of course, is being exposed to germs and disease and illness. We all sheltered down during uh, COVID-19, wore masks and gloves and hand sanitizers. So there was a rebound effect of people getting colds and flus and other illnesses. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, trying to protect yourself from germs as opposed to getting out there and uh, getting that so-called herd, herd immunity? Well, understand that you're probably insulted and assaulted by a thousand different uh, pathogens, germs, and you call them germs, pathogens, mm -hmm. uh, every day. But your body beats them off. And the whole idea of this book is at a level that is for us regular folk to understand in plain English how the system works and why. For instance, probably the best thing to protect yourself is washing your hands. Mm -hmm. And the other is not to put your hands by your nose, your mouth, and your eyes. Yeah. Because germs really can't get in very well through the skin unless you have a cut or a burn. But they can get in through those orifices. Mm. That's why they need to be protected. But you can protect yourself by thinking about it. Because a lot of people touch their eyes or their nose sometimes during the day. And all you're doing is saying to the lovely germs, oh, here's the door. Why don't you go in? Exactly. Yeah, they call them ports of entry. Yes. Your nose, your eyes, and other body parts, your mouth. And I remember during COVID, they talked quite a bit about don't touch your face, don't touch your face for that very, very reason. Talk to us about vaccines. A lot of people are hysterical about vaccines now. Uh, I grew up getting vaccines. You grew up getting vaccines. We survived. We don't have autism. Um, but uh, what are well, your thoughts on question, vaccines? I have some question about that. But <laughs> besides that, vaccines as a whole is probably the greatest general invention for the protection of health. You think about it. Polio. Uh, measles. Mumps, uh, German measles uh, that have been wiped out entirely because of vaccines. Now, yes, 
there is controversy because there are side effects. But in the overall picture, uh, having herd immunity, which means at least 85 to 90 percent of the people have been vaccinated, these germs cannot spread. The best example, I suppose, is measles. That's the most that, that spreads so quickly; it flies in the air. And if you're old enough to be as old as I am, you would have known that all kids got measles. And once you got them, everybody in the class, everybody in your family got the measles, mm. and mostly you were immune, or dead, or sick. But here is a vaccine that is a works all the time and all of a sudden there are little pockets i mean measles was almost wiped out entirely in our country but now there are little pockets of where people won't get vaccinated and the measles will come back uh there are a lot of vaccines there they have different levels of success they have different levels of uh, potential side effects and learning about them is a good idea, but to condemn them as a general rule is a very bad idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's controversy. What vaccines should you have and when? Mm -hmm. well, those are the kind of details you gotta take up with your own doctor because there's a lot of different opinions. But I don't think you should uh, decide that you don't want a vaccine because you don't want anything in your body. Let it's me... funny when my kids were growing up, uh, the uh, chicken pox vaccine was brand new and the doctor suggested it. But because it was brand new, I said, you know what? We all grew up and got chicken pox. If they get chicken pox, what's the big deal? They all got chicken pox and they were so sick for two weeks with sores all over their bodies. It was the biggest mistake I ever made in my life, I think. So, you know, take your vaccines. Do your, do your homework, talk to your doctor. If the doctor's advising it, he or she is probably right. So that was my goof. Here, here's what happens. You get a, a measles, let's say. Uh, it's a virus and it gets there and viruses grow very fast in the body before your immune system, the T cells, the B cells can, they have to manufacture uh, antibodies. It takes a little while. So the disease grows faster than the antibodies can be manufactured. So it takes a while. It's like the flu. You get the flu and in addition to getting a virus, you probably get a little bacteria in there too. But you get the virus. But it, the virus grows faster. So you're sick for three or four days. Then you start to win. If you had a vaccine for the flu, you would have antibody memories. And antibody memories will respect quickly. And you may never know that that flu bug arrived when you put your hands up by your eye. Mm -hmm. But he was met by antibodies that were already floating in your systems. And you didn't know that you had the flu because you never got it. It's mm -hmm. quiet. And this is why this is a good idea. Now, flu is very strange because they, the, flu, the flu vaccine does not necessarily cover every kind of flu. Right. And so, yeah. So, yes, when they talk about vaccines, this is why. It's because your body needs to have antibody memory of that particular disease and you are protected. Yeah. People were afraid of the COVID-19 vaccine because it was a new type of vaccine that worked on your RNA. Um, what are your thoughts on the COVID-19 vaccine in hindsight now that we look back at the pandemic? Well, of course, it's like any flu. Uh, it can't reach every, every kind. But the new RNA, the, these new ones are a brand new invention. I think they're, I personally think they're marvelous. They're, they work well, and there is no uh, swine flu virus in the vaccine. You can't get it from that because it's a phony. It's a phony fake that fools the immune system into thinking that you have the disease. Mm. 
and therefore gives you immunity. I think that the, I think uh, the Pfizer and Moderna have the two. Uh, the others are a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, and different people have different opinions, but that's a brand new approach. Uh, brand new in the speed of medicine, and yeah. brand which I think it bodes well for future vaccines. I mean. Yes. And people are talking about it being a potential cancer preventative down the road, which would be wow. wonderful, of course, without a doubt. Let me ask you this. We live in an age where everybody wants to be holistic. Um, I know when I'm exposed to germs, and like you said, we're exposed all the time, but sometimes it's obvious. You're sitting on a plane and somebody is hacking up a lung next to you. And that happened to me recently. And I got my zinc and I took zinc right away and I sucked on zinc tablets until my stomach ached. Uh, what are your thoughts on zinc, vitamin C, other holistic things we can do? Well, all of the things that have a good, uh, make you healthy, particularly just even a healthy uh, diet, vegetables and so forth, all of those things build your immune system because your immune system needs you to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Sleep, uh, hydration, mm -hmm. good food, Things that bring it down, too much alcohol, mm -hmm. a little bit, okay. Too yeah. much, not okay. Right. Um, uh, stress is not good for your immune system. Mm -hmm. Actually being cold outside, when mother says, wear your coat, she <laughs> meant it. Because yeah. being warm is better than being cold if you want to be help your immune system. So, yeah, uh, holistic is means pay, paying attention to what you eat, to what you drink, and to how much fluid you take, how much sleep you get. All of those nice holistic things make your body healthy. And you are manufacturing, understand that your white blood cells don't stay alive. Some stay longer, some will last for maybe a couple hundred days, some only for a few few days. Different white blood cells do a lot of different things. And the whole new world that we're learning about the cytokines, little teeny uh, uh, items. <laughs> they're messengers. Sometimes they're, they're doing things to hurt uh, viruses and bacteria. These are new, whole new discoveries. When I say new, within the last decade. And they are learning more and more about them. And yes, holistic has got to help build and develop all of these uh, proteins. Like you said, good sleep, good hydration, good food. And I guess a multivitamin or some zinc couldn't hurt. You know, there are things that are going to help your body. Hurt. Getting your vitamins naturally is better than it's best absolutely food. absolutely get it from whole foods get it from unprocessed foods get it from uh green leafy vegetables absolutely before we leave you today let me just ask you this what do you hope the takeaway is for readers what do you hope sticks with them after they turn that last page they will understand it at the most elementary level exactly what's happening in the body and why sometimes their immune system turns against them for autoimmune diseases, why vaccines work and how they work, how your body functions. And this is at the most elementary level, uh, English language, not, not, not a medical uh, book at all. It's not a medical book, but it gives you a general notion. You have a general notion of how the heart works, how the lung works. Mm. Most people have no clue how the immune system, because it's very complex, with yeah. different things doing different work at the same time. Absolutely. In plain spoken English, you will find all you need to know about the human body and its immune system. And I think it's a wonderful book. The name of the book is Everybody's Antibodies, Understanding Your Immune System in the World of COVID. It is written by Mark P. Freelander Jr. And it is available on Amazon and other booksellers as well. It's essential reading for anyone who wants to take control of their health, understand how their body protects them, and face the future with knowledge. 
instead of fear. Mark, thanks so much for joining me here today. Thanks for inviting me. Pleasure to I, be here. Pleasure to have you on the show. I appreciate your insight and the wonderful research and time you've taken to craft this terrific book. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford for the Global Book Network. So long for now. Thank you.